Here we go. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. That's a lot of people's life verse. Then it wasn't written for you. It was written to people in captivity to know that God is going to rescue them. So hang in there. I know exactly what I'm going to do with you. <gasps> well, isn't that for me? No, that's not who it's for because it was in that specific situation. You're in cap. I mean, think about it. You're over in Assyria and you're languishing and God says, I have a plan for you. I, 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 I've got a plan for you to prosper. Do you think they would have said, ah, that means that God is going to help me start that business and flourish? No. They would have simply understood that God is going to rescue us. No. Does God have a plan? Well, go find another verse, but not this one. And it's funny that people use this one for their life verse, but they don't look a few verses down to say verse 17 and say, I want this one. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I'm sending upon them the sword, famine, and pestilence, and I'll make them like split open figs that cannot be eaten due to rottenness. <laughs> Nobody takes that verse. Why? Because it wasn't written to you. He's not going to do that. He was going to do it. So we can't apply it to ourselves when it was just written to those people. If we understand it beyond what the original audience would have, we've done it wrong. That includes you, Evander Holyfield. <laughs> Remember on his trunks, he had 2911 because that verse promises I'm going to be able to beat up this guy. I even heard people talk about this in athletic competitions in the Olympics. Hey, God has a plan to prosper me, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Really? Were you planning on getting a bronze medal? I'm just asking because you see those verses applied to those people in those situations at that time, underneath that covenant, in that situation, in that language, and you and I need to figure out how they apply to us, if at all. Okay. All right, this is a... Can you hold this for a second? Okay. Don't get your water from the trough. No, actually, tell me how it tastes. And the preaching is unbelievable. Best of all, if you attend the Psalm 119 conference, you will love Jesus more. You got to go. Get your tickets. What are you doing? At wretched.tv. Doing a spot. What are you doing? What are you doing?